Hey guys, and welcome back to That LP Show. The name of the game is The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past for the Super NES. Now, before moving on, there's something that I wanted to show off, and it involves uh, starting a save file from the sanctuary and executing a series of very well timed dashes from the sanctuary all the way to the secret entrance that we originally took to enter Hyrule Castle at the very beginning of the game. This can be very difficult, due mainly in part to the very slow response time of the Pegasus Dash, but if we can pull it off, there's a little secret that's hidden in the game. Let's see if we pulled it off. Yes! Okay, what does this thing say? My name is Chris Houlihan. This is my top secret room. Keep it between us, okay? So this is the Chris Houlihan room. Back in, the, back in 1990, Nintendo Power Magazine held a contest. Uh, to win the contest, what you had to do was take a picture of you fighting the War Mech, a very rare encounter in Final Fantasy on the NES. And the winner was Chris Houlihan. He sent it in, and his prize was a cameo appearance, or at least to have his name in a future Nintendo title. Uh, and this is what he got. This room is not intended to be accessed through normal play. What this actually is, is a uh, crash prevention measure. The game will send Link here when it doesn't know what room to send him in. So it's just kind of a fail safe and that's one, uh, what I just showed you is one of currently five known methods for, ac for uh, accessing the Chris Houlihan room. And no matter what your method for accessing it, once you exit, you pop out of Link's house. So, there you go. That's the Chris Houlihan room, and you can see other methods for it uh, somewhere on YouTube. I'm showing you that one because it's, in my humble opinion, uh, the most difficult way of pulling it off. Anyway, on with the rest of the game. Okay, so we just rescued the first Maiden, and like I said before, we now have access to uh, any of the other dungeons. Well, not all of them, but, uh, well... We now know where they all are, even though at this point we can sequence break a little, which I'll be doing eventually, but for right now I'm going to uh, use my new magic hammer, which oddly enough gives us uh, access to pretty much the rest of Hyrule, and I'm going to travel around a bit, and I'm going to get some other stuff before we move on. We're going to do a little bit of upgrading and powering up, getting some piece of, pieces of hearts and some new items. Okay, now with our magic hammer equipped, first of all, let's get rid of these guys because they're going to they're going to be a nuisance. You die now. There we go. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to pound these stakes down and we have access to much more of Hyrule. Okay, so the first place I want to go is down here next to the swamp. Cuz there's a new medallion that we can get. And it involves going to uh, the Swamp of Evil, or near the Swamp of Evil, which is actually the Dark World equivalent of the desert. There we go. Let's take these guys out real quick. Get them out of the way. Go on now. All right. Now these stakes are kind of put in a position to where it kind of clues you in. So, what we do is standing right here behind these stakes, we use our magical mirror to transport ourselves back into the light world. And we see kind of a, a stone slab there. And uh, the, the language on it is written in Hylian, so we have to have the Book of Medora in order to read it. And for doing that, we get the Bombos Medallion, which is a fiery screen nuke. So, yeah, feel free to abuse that if you ever end up in a jam with a bunch of enemies. I probably won't be using it uh, to very great effect. Won't be using it much at all in this game. I might show it off here and there. Okay, now that we have that, we want to go up to uh, Kakariko Village, or at least its Dark World equivalent, Thieves Town. So, as you can see, the Dark World is laid out uh, very much like... Uh, Hyrule, you know, with some minor differences. Actually, you know what? There is uh, a few things that I want to get before moving on to the town. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, clear a path for us right there. Just stand near these flowers and transport back into the light world. Oh, look, a landmine. Don't step on it.
Here we go, and after going into this cave, we have access to another piece of heart. And then back to the Dark World. Now, remember when we went into the forest south of Kakariko Village, and we saw that boy sitting on the tree stump playing the flute? Well, let's see where he went. Ah, there he is, and uh, he's looking a little worse for wear. After wandering into this world, I turned into this shape. I enjoyed playing the flute in the quote-unquote original world. There was a small grove where many animals gathered. I want to see that place again. I buried my flute there with some flower seeds. Will you try to find it for me? Yes, and for helping him out, we get a shovel. And, well, we can pretty much just dig holes with it. He wants us to find his missing flute. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the light world. And then we're going to dig for his flute here in this grotto. But first we're going to get interrupted by his little song again. Okay, so let's equip that shovel. And it is always right here. So just remember that spot right there. The flute is always there. And it replaces our uh, shovel in the inventory slot. Um, if you're playing the Game Boy Advance version, there's an extra inventory slot that the game adds to have both uh, the flute and the shovel. So you get to keep the shovel after getting the flute. All right, let's report our findings back to him. Thank you, Link. But it looks like I can't play my flute anymore. Please take it. If by chance you go to the village I lived in, please give it to a tired old man you will find there. Well, my mind is getting hazy. Please, let me hear the sound of the flute one last time. And we go ahead and play it for him. And after hearing his flute one last time, he completes his transformation into a tree, I guess. You know what? It could be very possible that he just became a Deku tree, even though this takes place much, much after Ocarina of Time. But on a different timeline for you timeline theorists out there. So uh, maybe this goes in line with this timeline's version of the Deku tree. Eh, who knows? Anyway, if we come all the way over here... Welcome to the treasure field. The object is to dig as many holes as you can in 30 seconds. Any treasures you dig up will be yours to keep. It's only 80 rupees to play. What do you say? And we go ahead and dig. And even if you didn't keep the shovel, we still get to have a, a loner for us to dig with. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're trying to find a piece of heart. Now, it's randomly generated as far as its location. So your best bet here is to just dig in the same place over and over and over again. Um, or in, like in the same series of patches that you like to dig and uh, keep doing that over and over again and eventually the game will randomly put the piece of heart where you like to dig and looks like we didn't do it that time but not to worry uh, all we got to do is uh, exit out one screen and come back in and everything's reset and we get to uh, we get to try again. So I'm going to keep doing this and I'll be back when I find the piece of heart. All right, excellent. Okay, so we're just going to let time run out. So that was about my fourth attempt. I've definitely had a much longer, harder time at pulling this off. But like I said, just keep doing it over and over and over again in the same spot. And it'll eventually land where you want it to be. It's kind of like playing the lottery. If you play the same numbers over and over and over again, you'll eventually win. You'll probably be 90 years old by the time you win, which is way too old to thoroughly enjoy that prize money. But the point is, you actually managed to pull it off. Okay, so I've returned here into the light world, and there's something that I want to take care of right over here. You have to have the magic hammer in order to access it, so let's go ahead and equip that. And drop down here. Okay, now we need the magic powder. And we have a statue holding a bowl of blood. Let's sprinkle some magic powder on it. And a bat pops out. Hey, blast you for waking me from my deep dark sleep. I mean, thanks a lot, sir. But now I will get my revenge on you. Get ready for it. Or is that okay with you, sir? Okay. 
Hehehe, <laughs> I laugh at your misfortune. Now your magic power will be dropped by one half. Congratulations. Now do your best, even though I'm sure it won't be enough. Have a nice day. See you. Okay, so, uh... If you were like me when I was little, that bipolar bat confused the crap out of me. And you have that half mark up there near your magic meter right now. Uh, what it does is it actually halves the amount of magic that your items consume, pretty much doubling your magic meter. So, well, there you go. Uh, this is actually a good thing that happened to you. So, uh, yeah, don't freak out. All right, we need to access the dark world right now, and uh, the only way we can that we can really access the dark world, and uh, or at least the dark world counterpart of Kakariko Village, is by going through the Lost Woods and finding a portal through there. So let's clear these guys out real quick because they're being kind of a pain in the ass. All right, there we go. And we need to use our magic hammer again. Nope, magic hammer. There we go. Alright. Okay, we can't lift that big rock yet, so we're gonna have to go through that way. Luckily, we have a little bit of a shortcut thanks to those bushes. And now we want to come down here to this house. And in here, what we get to do is we get to pay 30 rupees, and he'll let us open up two chests. So we're just going to open up that one, and that one, and we didn't get what we were looking for. We're looking for a piece of heart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out, and then go back in. And I'm going to keep playing the game over and over again. And just like with the digging challenge, just open up the two the same two chests over and over and over again. Because the location of the piece of heart is randomly generated. So I'll be back as soon as I win. Alright, so that was only my third attempt. And we got uh, a full heart container for getting that final piece of heart. Alright, so before moving on, we still have a little bit more hunting and gathering to do, but that's going to have to wait until next time. And until next time, thank you for watching That LP Show, and have a one that is good.